Robin Curtis, yes. welcome to Hi. Volcon. Welcome to Southern Alberta. And uh, it's phenomenal to be here. Oh my goodness, I didn't know Vulcan existed well, until this weekend. I know, and that you have been supporting everything Vulcan. Uh, for, for a long time. Um, um, I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled to know that Star Trek's anchored here and that you have a great tourism bureau supporting the, the cause. I think it's marvelous. It is the official Star Trek capital of Canada. There you go. What took you so long to have me here? Oh my goodness, I've been missing out on this great party. Well, we've had Lolita here before, who's going to be your partner in crime on stage today. Absolutely. So I'm hoping she was the one that told you about how great it is. Absol no, no, absolutely. Lolita brought me here and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to be here with everybody. Well, I'll tell you, uh, talking to you now, you look look like you haven't aged a day since uh, when you first came out in Star Trek 3. That's one of the nicest things you can say to a woman. Just turned 60 June 15th. You'd never know Not it. Not bad. Thank you. Uh, it never hurts to be nice to ladies Thank either. You. So. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> no, you look absolutely fabulous. Thank it's you. great to see you. Life's been good. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Now, now, one of the things, I think it's a bit, a bit of a misnomer about you, is a lot of people say, you know, well, that was that was your first ever acting job when you got Lieutenant Savick, and that wasn't right. true. You had done no. a lot of stuff before that. A little that, bit, a little bit. I, I mean, I, I started out, I think, like a lot of factors um, in, in high school and college uh, and in the summers uh, it, while I went to university. Um, I did a lot of musical theater back in those days, but Russell, I learned early on once I got out into the city, in New, York, New, York, New York City that is, and the Broadway scene, that I wasn't really good enough. I wasn't Broadway material. I hadn't had any training um, uh, as a dancer, and you've got to have that triple threat going for you. So I kind of kind of figured out that maybe, maybe working with a camera might work as an actress for me. Um, started doing commercials and I learned I learned how big uh, things look on camera. Like in the beginning I was I was you know everything I was projecting to the last row in a theater so to speak and not realizing that on camera everything needs to be a little more subtle, a little bit more Robert, Robert De Niro if you know what I mean. Um, and so over the years early on I, I just got lucky. I got just dumb lucky. Uh, in both in the city and, and in California, yeah. getting hired to do things on camera. My first, um, I think my first uh, television episode was a Knight Rider episode. And then my first movie of the week was with John Ritter in something called um, In Love with an Older Woman. And then a year later, I was interviewed for Star Trek. Couldn't believe it, couldn't believe it. Walked into that interview, said, you know, if I was gonna be a part of Star Trek, I'd wanna be an alien. And lo and behold, it was a, it was an alien, the, the part of Savick. Now, had, had, were you familiar with with the Star Trek universe before? Uh, familiar enough. Uh, I watched it when I was a kid. I was just a little 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 tyke uh, at the time, but I remember thinking it was very erotic. Yeah, Russell, I did. I I, I, I was watching those big breasted women and mini skirts, you know, flirting with Shatner and, and, and Nimoy in the cave with Marriott Hartley. You know, does he stay? Does he go? Um, it, 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 it all, they always seem to have sort of this sexual tension, I thought, beneath the surface. Um, uh, people flirting with people all the time and women exposing themselves. You know, Jim, I've got the disease too. You know, I can remember these things. They're, they're sort of fuzzy in my mind, but, but overall I remember the first, the first interracial kiss. You know, the whole concept of that, the, the, the political and, and, and societal uh, concept of that went right over my head. I was more taken with the dynamic between the alien making them do it at, at, to, for his pleasure, and them being sort of, sort of in this awkward, but, but, but never, nevertheless titillating moment with one another. That's what stuck with me. So, so my impressions of Star Trek were sort of probably a little, a little more toward the. Um, the, uh, the the the, uh, the hormonal t teenager t t impression than than you know you know this incredible universe that Gene Roddenberry created. So you get right the job, right? right? So you get the job now yeah. in, in Star Trek Three, and and it's 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 erotic, it's all this great stuff, and you're a Vulcan. There you go. I go through this like this incredible learning spurt, you know, th that it isn't that, and and that there's so much more going on, and but, but then of course I end up in a cave with Spock having foreplay. So in a way, it always went back to the, <laughs> to the erotic, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, um, I have such respect for the franchise. I have such respect for Gene, what Gene Roddenberry created. The fact that he was a humanist has interested me. Um, his political um, point of view always interested me. I mean, once I, once I delved further into, you know, the, the mind behind the, uh, the franchise, I, I was very impressed. This idea of celebrating differences, idic, infinite combinations and infinite um, uh, differences, I, 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 you know, that that's, so is in my DNA as to how I see the world. 
and 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 how and and the way we're only going to all survive is if we choose to embrace what's different rather than fear what's different. Um, so joking aside, uh, yeah, I have the utmost respect for Star Trek and everything he created, and I and I'm thrilled to to think that the message has been revived with this new franchise. I think it's great. It's, I think it's wonderful. I'm excited about the the film coming out later this month, and and just. Uh, also, also, honestly, like many, and I didn't even know him. I'm still reeling from the from the loss of the of the actor, uh, the the, the uh, sudden death of the gentleman who played uh, Chekhov. Uh, Anton Yelchin. Yeah. Yes, yes, Anton Yelchin. So, anyway, it's, it's Star Trek is that 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 sort of per perfect combination of of, of of pain and joy, and, and that is that is the human condition. Well, talk a little bit about you know. Your legacy in, in Star Trek, no, no matter what you do now from, from now until the end of time, you are always going to be associated with this franchise that's been around for 50 years that, that has spawned so much fandom that no matter where you go or what you do, right. you know, you're still Robin Curtis, you've still done Absolutely. other things, but a lot of people are going to identify you as Lieutenant Sunday. It's It's humbling. It's humbling, but it's a privilege. It's a privilege. I had no idea when I was cast that, 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 this, that this experience would unfold and endure for me. Um, um, and I came to it, I kind of came to it with a little resistance early on, thinking, "Who wants me to hear?" You know, I didn't feel I didn't feel worthy, if you will, of the experience, of the invitation. Um, but now that I've leapt into that experience um, and I've formed relationships, this has been the most enriching aspect of Star Trek overall. It wasn't the original part; it wasn't the movie itself. That that was the springboard. But but it's been it's been connecting with people for 33 years, and enduring friendships all over the world, and meeting the most spectacular people, um, and 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 it, it's it's just been such a marvelous chapter to my life. It doesn't end, and I love it. I mean, right now I'm living a very ordinary life in upstate New York. I always did in California too. I live, I, I think I carved out intentionally an ordinary life, even though I was an actress and people might have thought I was doing these glamorous things. My days were pretty mundane, like everybody's days. You know, you get up, you make some breakfast, you go for a walk, you get in the car, you take the dry cleaning, you know, what are you going to eat? Whatever. But, but now I sell real estate. I'm in upstate New York, I'm partners with a custom home builder. We sell homes. Um, and, and to get to leave that for a weekend and come out here and play with all of you, it's like, I just pinch myself, I'm so lucky. So lucky, so blessed. Yeah.